Hi friends, today we're making my favorite dessert of all time, dirt cake. So this is my aunt's recipe. She made it every family get together when I was growing up and I love it. And it was actually one of the first recipes I ever shared on the blog way back in 2013. And I'm going to a party tonight, Christmas party, and um, I'm making it. So I thought, why don't I make a video showing you guys how to make it? This is one of my most popular recipes and I do get some questions about it sometimes. So I didn't wanna do the little hands and pans overhead shot video. I wanted to actually show you guys as I make it in real time so I can address questions that I sometimes get. But first, let's talk ingredients. Okay, of course, the star of the show for our dirt cake is Oreos. I use a family size pack that's um, one pound, three ounces. If you can't find a family size, I recommend getting two smaller ones and just having extra Oreos uh, left over because extra Oreos are never a bad thing in my book. Okay, we have a third of a cup of butter and eight ounces of cream cheese. Both of these you want really soft. So I've had these out on the counter for about two hours because I want them to cream together with the powdered sugar as our first step. So I want to make sure they're nice and soft at room temperature. And then of course, powdered sugar. I have a cup of powdered sugar here. Okay, next we have two boxes of French vanilla instant pudding mix. It's important that you make sure you get instant pudding and not regular pudding. When I first published this recipe six years ago, I didn't specify that and some readers had some problems. So make sure you're getting French vanilla and instant pudding. If you can't find French vanilla, vanilla will work, but I recommend getting the French vanilla if you can find it. Okay, we have our milk and we're gonna use three and a half cups of that milk. You can use any kind. I normally use 2% just because that's what I keep in my house, but it doesn't matter, whatever your preference. And finally, we have whipped cream. This is a big container. This is not, you're not gonna use the whole thing. You're gonna use one of the smaller eight ounce containers. This is just what I had on hand, so I'm only gonna use half of it. So we'll get started. Um, you can do this without a stand mixer. It's a little bit easier on the creaming together of the cream cheese and the butter and the powdered sugar if you do it in a regular mixer, but you can go either way. I think what I might do is cream the butter and cream cheese and sugar in this and then transfer it to the bowl so you guys can see the mixture more easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my butter and my cream cheese to my mixer and then I'm gonna add that one cup of powdered sugar as well and like I said these are nice and soft so this is gonna be pretty easy not a lot of work for the mixer it's kind of a funny angle to cook at but I wanted you guys to be able to see it all right I'm gonna start this on low so my sugar doesn't kick up I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the speed. Now you will need to go ahead and uh, scrape down the sides and the, um, the whisk and keep repeating that until it's all creamed together nice and even. Okay, now our cream cheese and butter and powdered sugar are all creamed together and I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to this bowl just for ease of cooking because I'm kind of at a funky angle here. There we go. I'm just gonna scrape this out. Okay, now we have our cream cheese mixture in our bowl. And my actual written recipe, I say to, to whisk together the other ingredients and, and then add this in, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter. So this is what we're going with today. So now I'm gonna add my three and a half cups of milk. and my pudding mix. I'm gonna add my whipped cream now. Okay, now that my cream cheese mixture uh, whipped cream, pudding mix, milk, everything's all in the bowl. And I'm, the best way to do this is with a whisk, not a spoon. And I'm just gonna start to mix this together and use a big bowl for this because it is a little cumbersome at first. So you don't splash it everywhere. And, and again, you can do this in your stand mixer if you want to. I just wanted you guys to be able to 
see what I was doing. I thought the glass bowl would be a little easier. So it's starting to incorporate now. And if I, if you could see closer, you would see as I'm mixing, the, it's kind of yellow, more yellow on the bottom and lighter on the top where that Cool Whip or whipped cream is rising to the top. So you wanna make sure that you're mixing until it's all the same color and it's all incorporated. The past people have said they've had their mixtures been runny and I believe that was because they were not using the instant pudding, they were using regular. So make sure again that you get the instant. So I just have a few more little lumpy bumpies in here I'm trying to whisk out. Yeah. Okay, so you can see it's a nice thick mixture. It's uniform in color. There we go. And now we can start layering. I like to make mine in a trifle dish. You don't have to, but again, it's, it's pretty and it'll be easy for you to see how I'm doing it. Now, as far as your Oreos, this, this pack's empty. I've already um, crumbed my Oreos. I usually do that in my Ninja blender if you have a food processor. Before I had those, um, I would put all the Oreos in a big gallon bag and just like, give my little boys a rolling pin and let them just crush them up. Just make sure that bag stays closed. It's a mess, believe me, I know. Um, so however you do it, you need to crush your package of Oreos. If you want, if you're doing a trifle dish, sometimes I set aside an Oreo to kind of pluck on the top, but it's up to you. Okay, we're ready to do this. All right, I have my trifle dish, I have our kind of custardy layer, and I have my crushed Oreos. Now, um, in the, like I mentioned, some people have it, say that it's thin. Look at this, this is just a couple minutes after me mixing it up. You can see how thick this is. There's nothing thin about this. So if you're following the recipe properly, you should not have thin um, cream layer. Okay, I have my Oreos, they're very finely crushed. If there's some larger chunks in there, it's not a big deal. And I have a spoon and I have a ladle, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my ladle and I'm gonna add some, a layer of custard to the bottom. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna push it, put it in the middle and I'm pushing the custard to the outside. This is how you're gonna get those pretty layers on the side. If you don't care, just throw it in there. But if you're taking it to a party like I am, you know, I'm gonna spend the extra time to make it look pretty in the trifle dish. So add the custard to the middle and push it to the outside gently. There we go. And make sure not to drip. And now I'm gonna add my Oreos. So I'm just gonna use a nice a kind of deeper spoon and I'm gonna just sprinkle a thin layer of Oreo. Paying attention to try and get it even around the outside edges again to have that, that pretty look. Now the second layer of custard is a little harder if you're trying to get that really nice and neat pretty look. So again, I'm gonna dollop a nice healthy amount right in the middle, probably need a little more, because you don't want to get the crumbs mixed up with the custard. So I'm gonna put, I put two big ladlefuls of the custard there, and again, I'm just gonna gently push until it touches the outside of my trifle dish. Just make sure that you don't get through the custard all the way down to the Oreo, or you're gonna mix everything up and it's not gonna look pretty. So add more if you need to, like I just did. I usually go for three layers of each. Sometimes they're even, sometimes they're not. Believe me, once people start eating it, no one will care. It's really tasty. Alrighty, and there you guys can see our pretty little dirt cake trifle. Now, I normally, like I said, I normally put a like one whole Oreo on the top. 
If you're giving it to kids, it's fun to put some gummy worms in there. They like that. I do that a lot when I serve it single size. I'll do it in little cups and put worms in the top like for birthday parties and stuff. But I hope this helps you guys to make this amazing dessert. I swear it's my favorite. I eat it on my birthday every year and take it to every party I go to um, if I get a chance just so I have an excuse to eat it. So I hope this helps guys and check out my blog for the full recipe. Bye.